Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So um, this last video that we that I put up on uh, machining the wobble gears, um, I I got quite a few comments on the uh, uh, asking about the tools that I was using uh, in that particular video. So what I thought I'd do is uh, just go over some of those tools real quickly, um, and then somebody asked about the uh, um, the tool holder rack back there too. So we'll uh, we'll zip in and get a little closer to that and get a look at that also. Um, so let's see, how should we do this? Um, actually, I think I'm just going to bring bring the camera in closer, and then we'll just kind of go over each tool uh, uh, individually and, and talk about it a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about the. Uh, we'll just do them in uh, in order that uh, they got used in the video. So let's talk about the parting tool first. Um, this is an Iskar tool here. Okay, um, Iskar parting tool. And Iskar really, uh, um, I don't know, quite a few years ago now, they really revolutionized the, uh, um, the world of parting. Um, they, they really did some research and they uh, um, came up with some really good insert geometries and some great holders, or great, you know, carbide insert holders uh, that just really worked well. Um, so, I don't know. You know, I don't know if they invented it or what. I don't know the, the total history of it, okay? Um, so what this one is here, and this is the one I was using in the video to cut the little, uh, cut these little monkeys off here. Uh, these is three quarter inch uh, cold rolled steel and this is zipped through it like cream cheese, okay? Um, and um, what these are, this is an Iskar self grip, okay, which means uh, the, the insert is just basically wedged in an opening here and you use a little tool to just to pop them out um, and then this is what the inserts look like here by themselves okay they're just loose little pieces so you're not buying this big old honking thing you buy these little guys right here right and uh, they have a nice chip breaker geometry on them and everything so this particular blade here is a retrofit for uh, high speed holders like this one so this is an Allura uh, CA7 holder here, and this blade is a direct replacement for the high-speed blade that goes in here, which is appealing to some guys. So you don't have to buy a big tool block to hold this thing, and um, you know there's a whole other assembly that goes with some of these parting blades that uh, complicates things. So this is just a direct uh, replacement for that, and they have them in all different sizes. So uh, it's a good option if you have a, a they already have a high speed one and you can switch back and forth between this and high speed which is kind of nice so this is a uh, SGHS-5-22-2 self grip and um, th these have to do with the size of the holder so you have to look these up on the ISCAR site to find uh, the right size now this one is kind of a thin one and um, so I don't you know it wiggles around a little bit uh, if you have deep parting to do and I have it on my list to buy one that's a little bit thicker uh, so I can use three millimeter wide inserts these are uh, um, what the heck are these I think these are excuse me, excuse me in front of the uh, uh oh left-handed calipers watch out mr. wizard what do I do um, so these are not, oops, what is it oh my god I can barely use these things I feel handicapped here, uh, 94 thousandths, so, uh, which is, what is that, two and a half millimeters, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense, to, yeah, 2.4 millimeters, so these are, the inserts are GTN 2.4, that's the width of the insert, okay, now I don't pretend to know all these numbers by heart or anything, um, I just have some stuff that works for me, okay, and so that's what I go with, all right, so that's that one. And then this is another one that uses the exact same insert, but it's in a, in a block, uh, it's in its own shank. Um, and this one can't quite go as deep, but it's much more rigid. So if you have a whole bunch of, actually it would have worked fine for this one. I just uh, happened to grab that one first. So basically the same thing, but this one is a lot stiffer uh, just by the nature of the, uh, nature of the holder. Okay, so that's the parting tool. Uh, Iskar and um, you know hopefully you can see all this crap on the camera so uh, um, I don't have to answer in the comments uh, you know anyway that's the stuff
Okay, so here's the next two that, uh, we'll, that we used in, the, in that last video. So this is my old, this is one of, this is my big time favorites here. This is a, a WNMG, okay? And once again, it's another ISCAR product here. Um, WNMG 3.1 PP, the PP is the chip breaker, uh, and IC907 grade. Um, this geometry works good on a lot of stuff, okay? Um, and it's a negative geometry, which means it's tipped down, okay? And you can see that in the holder there, all right? And for guys that are asking about the holders, this is an MWLNR holder, okay? Um, and um, anyway, uh, depending, this is the shank size here, so depending on what you can accommodate, uh, um, you have to find a different number that, for whatever size tool holder you have. Anyway, this is a, um, a trigon, I think they call it, kind of slang. Uh, it's kind of neat because uh, now with a negative geometry, you get to use both sides of the insert. So this one has six available cutting edges. So I can rotate it three times here, then I can flip it over and rotate it three more times. Now this one here is also a negative geometry, uh, but because of the shape of this C insert, the diamond, 80 degree diamond here, um, I can only, um, I can turn it in for in, so I get two, and then I flip it over and I get two more, so I get four out of that one. Um, these particular ISCAR inserts are pretty reasonably priced. Uh, some of these other ones, uh, these larger ones and uh, uh, name brand stuff can get pretty pricey, so uh, be prepared <laughs> for a shock there on, uh, on carbide inserts. Um, so if you're gonna buy one, uh, I'd probably get that one, because this performs well across the board on a lot of different stuff. And uh, uh, steel, cast iron, stainless steel, um, it works on aluminum, uh, you know, not super great, but it, uh, uh, it, it cuts. So if you're gonna just buy one, I, I like this one here. That's Tom's two cents worth, okay? And then the, uh, the finishing one that we were using for the high-speed finishing here, was this, uh, it's a CN, uh, CNGP 430, let's see, 432 probably, looking at the, uh, the radius, the last number is the radius, the nose radius here. Um, and this is a, this is a Sandvik holder here, which is a, a DCLNR and 12-4B, uh, that's the, uh, the shank size once again. Um, and it has a clamp that pushes it down and pulls it back into the pocket and I get four edges out of that and you can see uh, hopefully you can see that um, pretty well is the the way it's shaped there I get a I get a positive cutting edge which means the cutting edge is pointed up like this basically okay and this has some similar tendencies here by the way it's shaped here so it, it it's it's giving me a slightly positive geometry. So these cut real free. Now here's a, here's a, uh, this is a, uh, what is this? Oh, this is a wiper insert. So this is a, uh, uh, a Sandvik here. Um, a CNMG is what this is, 432 or three. Uh, and that's, once again, that's the last numbers, the radius. So you can see it's a much flatter geometry. So this is a really, this is a bomber geometry here. You can really rip with that. Uh, when Adam and I were doing those uh, facing tests, uh, uh, that's the kind of geometry we were using there. This one would not survive that. It would, uh, it's too sharp. So you need some strength uh, uh, near the cutting edge there. And just looking at that, it's the, you got the ax and you got the straight razor kind of. Uh, that's kind of the, uh, the mentality there, right? So the axe, you can hit hard and, uh, and the edge lasts a long time, but the straight razor you can make fine cuts with. So think about it like that. So this, um, you know, generally uh, big inserts like this, this is size four here, which is a half inch uh, inscribed circle. Those are pretty big, they're pretty expensive inserts. You, you know, for most uh, hobby operations or smaller operations, you can drop down to a smaller size and the inserts are a little less expensive, okay? So anyway, those are the two, uh, WNMG, uh, CNG, or CNGP, uh, CNMG, okay, 
And then uh, this is the insert. Uh, this is the ISCAR here. Uh, you know, here's all the specs on it right there. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, and these are, if you buy them ten at a time, I think they're seven or eight bucks a piece, something like that. Uh, be prepared. You know, those are probably twelve or fifteen dollars each. So if you buy ten of them, that's a hundred and fifty bucks. Okay. So tighten up your uh, <laughs> tighten up your suspenders and uh, uh, and fire up your checkbooks. Okay, and the last thing we're going to show tonight is this tool rack here. Um, and this is just made up out of just standard electrical guy uh, Unistrut. Um, and I had made this light holder <clears throat> that holds the fluorescent light. So I just kind of added on to that with a cross piece and then came down with some 45 brackets. And then um, um, this has the, uh, uh, the Unistrut nuts that drop into the rail. And then what's the actual uh, part that engages the tool block is this Simpson strong tie bracket that I got at uh, Home Depot uh, and it's model A24. And it happens to fit this uh, tool block really well. And I just ground a, a little lead in on this so that uh, these things pop on there really easily. Uh, and I can add them and subtract them and add more to it if I want and uh, uh, It's actually working out really well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, um, I wasn't used to having my tools back here. I used to put them up on the headstock all the time But when you have a lot of tool blocks uh, It gets kind of crowded up there and the tools get dinked and they bump into each other So it's kind of annoying. Oh, actually, you know what that reminds me. We were gonna talk about that one, too uh, Okay Another time on that. Um, anyway, uh, um, it's just made out of Unistrut. I'll, I'll get another shot from a different angle so uh, uh, folks can see that because uh, a couple people have asked about that. Anyway, I, I got the idea from uh, Herb Blair. He built one. Uh, he, he welded his up out of tubing and stuff. And I said, oh, well, hey, there's a great idea. And I just kind of said, eh, how do I want to do this, right? And uh, I was started thinking about I always like these at Home Depot because you know this is like two bucks or something like that I don't know what it is you know it's pretty cheap but they got all these different brackets and you know maybe you can use them for for other things is what I'm always thinking about so all right so here's another shot here and you can see the the 45 bracket here and you can see the the back side of that I mean not a lot of magic here it's just a bunch of uh, electrician erector set stuff and uh, that's kind of convenient for making stuff like this anyway uh, I think that's about it